Well, hey there, church family. I thought maybe we'd get out and about today. We've been stuck inside for several weeks. So I thought maybe we'd get out and take a little virtual walk together. Stretch our legs, maybe even stretch our faith. Like me, I'm sure that these unique times have made for some interesting conversations with your neighbors and coworkers. It seems that there's a lot of uncertainty and anxiety in the world today. Those uncertainties, those anxieties are creating a lot of questions in all of us. And in many ways, the current situation is testing our faith and our resolve about a great many things. One of the main things that these unique times bring about and test is the ultimate object of our faith. Many of our neighbors and coworkers, friends and family, they have faith in things that can't stand up to the current events. Things like the government, the media, money, employment, health, their own education, their own understanding. Much like the experts in their field that we've seen on television and on the internet so much lately, who really, all they can do is share with us their best guesses. They don't know anything for certain, even among all their great learning. All of that leads to a sense of uneasiness. It leads to anxiety and angst. Like you, my extended family, my friends and neighbors and coworkers, they have faith in unreliable and unsure sources. But I wanna to talk to you today about two things that are in short supply right now and are so desperately needed, not just in the world, but maybe in the wider family and kingdom of God. And those two things, are peace and joy. So let's talk about peace. The inner peace of God refers to a state of being inside yourself, something only you can measure. It is enough knowledge and understanding of a loving God to keep yourself strong in the face of uncertainty or stress. Being at peace is the opposite of being anxious or afraid. Our brother Peter tells us to cast all of our anxieties on him because he cares for us. And our older brother Paul tells us that the God of hope will fill us with all joy in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can abound in that peace. And our savior and master Jesus, he said that in him, we may have peace, that in the world, we're gonna have tribulation, but to take heart because we've he has overcome the world. The world is a hostile place. It can either give or easily understand peace. All those things I mentioned a few moments ago that your neighbors and friends trust in can't give peace. True peace can only be cultivated and experienced after we've believed and began our walk in salvation. But even then, Peace can easily be lost when times are trying, like today. Peace is something our world needs, and you, you church, you're the vessel in which God wants to display it. So let's recalibrate our peace to his peace. Peace escaped me personally for a great many years. Due to my wartime experiences, I was unable to know peace until the God of peace finally broke through that wall that I had inadvertently created by trusting in myself and not in the one who made me. You can only know that you have peace when things in your life are not peaceful. I appreciate you taking a walk with me. Now let's talk about joy. Joy is the settled assurance of God that he is in control of all details of your life. It's a quiet confidence that ultimately everything's gonna be all right. And it's a determined choice to praise God in every situation. Our brother James tells us to count it all joy when we meet trials of various kinds. And our much older brother Jeremiah told us that his words are joy and the delight of our hearts because we are called by his name. Joy, much like peace came unfortunately later in my spiritual life. I was determined to be happy, but little did I know that happiness and joy are distinctly separate things. Happiness was always fleeting. 
If I had it, it didn't last. And if I found it, it faded away. But joy, joy is a determined state of being. And like peace, unfortunately, you can only know that you have joy when things in your life are not joyous. Dear church, my words to you are simply this. Choose peace, choose joy. In these times of distress, let those two things be evident to a world that so desperately needs them. Your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, they need to see what faith in the right things brings about in someone's life. You are a vessel to carry those things. So fill yourself up and deliver what our little world around us so desperately needs. In closing, I just want to say thank you for taking a walk with us. The shepherds are here for you. Even though you may not see us, we're still here. The staff, they're there for you too. All you have to do is call. Be sure that you stay in your word daily. That's how we cultivate our peace and our joy. Remain fervent in your prayers daily so that we can know the taste and the feeling of peace and joy. God be with you all till we get back together. And in his love, see you soon. God even has a sense of humor because while preparing for my talk and speaking about my wartime experiences, of course I'm gonna be treated to a little bit of this. And uh, reminded of the times of peace, the times of angst, the times of great anxiety. Go get them, boys and girls. <laughs>